Today's our honeymoon, right? What do you mean by tearing up my passport just as we finished packing and were about to leave? My husband, in what seemed like a crazy move, forcefully tore my passport. His smug face really got on my nerves. I never planned to go with you in the first place. I was obviously going to go with my mom. I had sensed some tension before we got married, but I had no idea the twisted relationship between my husband and my mother-in-law was this deep. I've never heard of anyone's mother-in-law hijacking their honeymoon, at least not in my circle. I was shocked and angry at this unbelievable situation, but above all, I felt really creeped out. I wondered if I'd made a huge mistake choosing him as my partner. As he brought out scissors and began to shred the passport, I looked at my mother-in-law grinning from ear to ear and thought I needed to get away from here as fast as possible. I never expected this, but I'd actually had the perfect evidence to bring these two down. My name is Sarah. I'm 29 years old and have been working for seven years. I recently got the proposal I'd always dreamed of from my boyfriend of four years, and now I'm right in the middle of planning our wedding and honeymoon. I met my husband after I started working. I've always been the lucky type, and although I got my first boyfriend in college, it seems he lost interest in the quiet and not so exciting me and we just drifted apart. Years passed without me dating anyone seriously until I started working. Never would I have imagined that out of all my colleagues, I'd be one of the first to get married. My husband was a senior at my company when I was a newbie, and he always supported me whenever I struggled with unfamiliar tasks at work. The only guy. I dated in the past was a classmate, but there's something about someone five years older. I found my husband dependable and trustworthy. When he asked me out on our first date, I was over the moon. I still cherish the dolphin figurine we bought during our first date at the aquarium. When he said he wanted to date with marriage in mind, I felt like I was on cloud nine. We went on many dates, and he proposed to me at the same aquarium where we had our first date. Can I really be this happy? That night I was so thrilled that I couldn't sleep, and I still remember that feeling with my head still in the clouds. We quickly decided to visit his parents' home the following week but it was there that I started feeling uneasy about getting married. My father-in-law was very kind, but my mother-in-law seemed to disapprove of me. You could have married someone more outstanding than this plain girl. Being told that at our first meeting filled me with doubt and anxiety about our future life together. But everyone feels some pre-wedding jitters, right? So I pretended everything was fine and carried on with the wedding preparations, one day, while discussing our life after marriage, both he and his mother just assumed I'd be quitting my job. While I once admired the idea of quitting work after getting married, I didn't see that as an option at this point. Looking back, I think my ongoing anxieties about marriage prevented me from considering leaving the place where I felt most secure, my job. While dodging the persistent suggestions from my mother-in-law to quit, I decided to keep working at the same company alongside my husband during our wedding preparations. We disagreed on the timing of our official marriage registration. He was eager to formalize things sooner. In the end, we decided to respect his wishes and registered. Shortly after that, the procedure felt rather mundane, but realizing that we were now officially married made me so happy. We discussed having a small intimate wedding but it seems he mentioned this to his mother, and she called the next day. You know, Edward's wedding, and you're talking about having a small intimate ceremony. Please don't just say whatever you want. The wedding needs to be grand. I'll make sure it's fitting for Edward. By the way, please keep your guest list minimal. Just your parents and close friends. Your friends are probably just as dull, right? They'd make the wedding feel so gloomy and ruin everything. I was bombarded with opinions about the venue and the guest list, and it was infuriating that she felt she had the right to dictate so much. But I wanted to avoid conflict with my soon-to-be mother-in-law. I had a ton of things I wanted to say, but I kept telling myself that maybe this is just how weddings go. I decided to invite only my parents and close friends, as my mother-in-law wanted. 
But my mother-in-law's meddling didn't stop there. She didn't just interfere with the guest list. She also had opinions about the program, entertainment, decorations, and food. If we did everything as she said, we'd go way over budget. Initially, Edward's family had said they would cover half of the wedding costs, but somehow that changed and now it was. Weddings are for the bride, and suddenly we were way over budget. I ended up having to pay for all the extra expenses she wanted, so the wedding ended up being a flashy affair just as she wanted, far from the simple ceremony I'd imagined. I tried to make some changes behind her back to save on costs, but I ended up getting scolded by her, saying, it looks cheap because you didn't do as I told you. Still, after the wedding was over, I thought I'd finally get some distance from her. But then my husband did the unthinkable. I was fed up with all the interference from her regarding the wedding, and even though my husband knew I wanted to keep my distance from her, he insisted we live with her. Our new place, which we'd already signed a lease for, was canceled without me knowing, and all of my belongings that were supposed to be moved there could only be sent to my husband's family home. I was at a loss for words, shocked by how everything had been decided without consulting me. The wedding planning was entirely left up to me. Even when I told Edward the costs would exceed the budget if we met all of her requests, he pretended not to hear. The anxiety I had even before the ceremony had grown immensely after our wedding. We had planned to go on a honeymoon abroad. I had always wanted to visit this dream destination, and the idea of going there for our honeymoon felt surreal. However, my growing unease with Edward, who by now was acting quite suspicious, and the thought of living with my mother-in-law when we returned really dampened my spirits. Yet just like with our wedding preparations, Edward wasn't very cooperative about the honeymoon planning. But strangely, he took the lead in booking the flights and hotels. I assumed he'd chosen a romantic hotel for our honeymoon stay and was excited as usual. I was left to foot all the bills, but with the pre-wedding euphoria, I was just glad that Edward was helping out even a little. Little did I realize this was a foreshadowing of a shocking event to come. The wedding wrapped up, and amidst the hustle and bustle, the day of our honeymoon arrived. Despite some unresolved feelings about the wedding and the impending cohabitation, I was determined to switch gears and enjoy the trip with the man I loved. But as I woke up in the middle of the night to prepare in time for our flight, Edward dropped a bombshell as if it was no big deal. Sarah, I'm going to go with my mom. As I was double-checking our luggage, I was stunned and couldn't comprehend what he just said. What? What are you talking about? It's our honeymoon. It's not like any other trip. Why would your mother be coming? And besides, we've only paid for two for the flight tickets and the hotel. Visibly shaken, I tried to understand his logic when Edward dropped another shocker. I never said I was going on this trip with you, did I? Don't make me laugh. Of course I'm going with my mom. A trip with her takes precedence over a honeymoon. It's a gratitude trip for all she's done for me. You stay here and get the house ready by cleaning every nook and cranny. With that, Edward began to forcibly tear apart my passport I had entrusted to him. I was in disbelief, unable to utter a word, just watching my passport being destroyed. Right then, my fully made-up mother-in-law burst into our room without knocking. Edward, are you ready? Seeing her, Edward's face lit up. Yeah, we're good. Finally, we can go on this trip without any interruptions. They both shared a gleeful laugh, leaving me utterly repulsed. I realized I was about to marry an absolute nightmare. I had been pondering how to get along with my mother-in-law in our upcoming married life, but this was beyond my wildest thoughts. I had made a colossal mistake right from the get-go. I get it now the kind of people you two are. I couldn't help but speak out, but my words seemed to be nothing more than sour grapes to them as they laughed heartily and left together. I had been so happy that Edward was helping out a bit with our honeymoon, but that was just him preparing to go with his mother. 
He had willingly taken charge of the flight and hotel bookings because he was booking everything under his mother's name from the start, and he dumped all the costs on me. The betrayal by my husband hit me hard, but my anger outweighs my sadness. The dreamy, intimate wedding I had always envisioned and the honeymoon, which was supposed to be the best memory with the one I loved, were both once-in-a-lifetime events, but they were ruined by my mother-in-law and my husband. I can't believe this is happening, I thought, overwhelmed by my situation. At first, I couldn't accept it, but soon after, I decided I've got to act fast and get a divorce. Interestingly, I had something that would come in handy for the divorce. Initially, I started recording with the intent of preserving memories of the most significant events of my life, my wedding and honeymoon. Since the wedding preparations, I had been recording and audio capturing various moments. What began as a pure desire to cherish our wedding memories gradually turned into documenting my mother-in-law's malicious actions and harassment. I often thought of quitting since I'd probably never watch these recordings again, but it's ironic how useful they turned out to be. Just a few days ago, I had moved in and was still unpacking. Now I began to repack my stuff. Ironically, I hadn't opened much, so packing was done in no time. I wondered if my husband and his mother were at the airport by now. The very thought filled me with an indescribable anger, so I tried not to dwell on it. Even though I'd only been there a few days, I wanted to erase any trace of my presence in that house, so I cleaned thoroughly everywhere I had been. While cleaning the living room, I stumbled upon something shocking. It was evidence that my husband was embezzling money from his company. Given his position in charge of company sales, he was reporting lower earnings to the company and pocketing the difference. Apparently, his mother was in on it too. She had meticulously noted the actual sales, the amount pocketed by my husband, and even listed all the luxury bags, clothes, and shoes he had bought for her with that money. It was a significant amount. Leaving such a diary in plain sight in the living room, I really couldn't fathom what they were thinking. Discovering my husband's misdeeds, I was horrified, realizing the gravity of the situation. For a moment, I wondered if working at the same company could somehow smooth things over. But then I thought, why should I help someone who ditched me for a honeymoon with his mother? I headed to the company with evidence of embezzlement, Though they were supposed to be on their honeymoon, having both taken paid leave, my colleagues were shocked to see the very person in the office. Everyone was asking, what happened? Weren't you on your honeymoon? No longer feeling the need to hide anything, I told them that my husband and my mother-in-law had gone on the honeymoon instead, that my passport was torn up, and that I had paid for the entire honeymoon. My colleagues, superiors, and boss were shocked and angry at my husband. For me, I thanked my concerned colleagues and made my way to the executive area of the company. In fact, though I never told anyone, one of the top executives of this company is my uncle. Neither my colleagues nor my husband or my mother-in-law knew this fact. I didn't want people to think I got the job because of connections, so I applied to the company without telling my uncle and secured the position on my own merit. My uncle doesn't handle human resources, so I reached out to him before the orientation and asked him not to reveal our relationship at the company. Though he was surprised, he commended my efforts and promised that we would interact just as any other executive and employee. My uncle doesn't have children, and since I was little, he doted on me as if I were his own child. Until around elementary school, my sisters and I went on several trips with just my uncle. When I was a child, I'd sneakily call my uncle to buy me things I wanted, and I would get scolded by my parents for it. That's how much he adored me. Since joining the company, our work areas have been entirely different. After briefly catching each other's eyes and exchanging smiles during the orientation, we haven't met since. I knocked on my uncle's office, explained the situation to his secretary, and was allowed in. My uncle greeted me with a beaming smile when I visited, but his expression quickly turned somber. Why are you here? Weren't you supposed to be on your honeymoon? 
Seeing my dear uncle's familiar kind face, I was overwhelmed with emotion and burst into tears. Through my sobs, I recounted everything that had happened, and he became visibly enraged, an expression I had never seen on him before. Of course, I told him in detail about my husband's embezzlement and handed over the evidence. My uncle promised to convene a board meeting immediately to address my husband's actions. Then he asked, What are you going to do today? Head back home? I nodded and he said, Well, before you do that, let's grab some good food. I'll drop you off at home afterward. Despite the unbelievable betrayal of having my honeymoon hijacked by my mother-in-law, I felt genuinely grateful. Knowing there were still warm-hearted people in my life who cared for me, a week later, when my husband and his mother returned from what was supposed to be our honeymoon, I received an immediate call. My husband was furious that I hadn't picked them up from the airport and hadn't cleaned the house as instructed. He ranted about where I could possibly be. With a recommendation from my uncle and parents, I had already hired a top-notch lawyer who specialized in divorce cases, and the process was underway. Without even letting my husband speak, I said, You two sure are loud and annoying. I don't want to hear your voices anymore. Why would I pick up someone I'm going to divorce? And why would I follow your silly orders to clean? He was momentarily speechless, but soon resumed his ranting. Do you think it's okay for you to say such things? I did you a favor by marrying you. If I divorce you, you'll never get remarried. My mom's furious, too. If you come back now and prepare our meals, I might forgive you. We're tired of foreign food. Make some tasty traditional meals. He had never spoken to me like that before our supposed honeymoon. After revealing his scheme with the passport and going on a trip with his mother, his true colors had shown. It dawned on me that I had never truly seen him for who he was. I had been reflecting on this realization over the past few days. I've consulted a lawyer regarding our divorce. Could you please discuss related matters with them? A lawyer? What are you talking about? I'm not getting a divorce. I could hear his mother in the background shouting for him to hand her the phone, calling me names. Well, do as you please. By the way, I informed the company about your embezzlement. I think they'll be calling you in soon. Maybe you should get a lawyer, too. Bye. I could sense his panic on the other end, but it wasn't my problem anymore. He kept calling, so I just blocked his number. My uncle was aware of our honeymoon dates, so right after our call, the company summoned my husband. Using the evidence I provided, they verified the information and confirmed the discrepancies in the payments. It turned out the amount my husband embezzled was enormous. In front of the company's executives, my husband desperately tried to defend himself. He fabricated a story, claiming, I was the real embezzler, and he had tried to stop me. At that point, my uncle couldn't hold back and shouted, My niece would never do such a thing. We've confirmed that you and your mother committed the embezzlement. You're lucky we haven't involved the police yet. Realizing the jig was up and that I was related to senior management, my husband looked as if he had lost his soul. That day, I went to the company to return the wedding gifts to my colleagues. Since our marriage had ended so soon after the wedding, everyone refused, saying they had given them as a token of their blessings. While I was surrounded by this warmth, my ridiculous husband approached. Why didn't you tell me you were related to the top brass? I'm sorry, really. Can we start over? Can you ask your uncle to keep me in the company and make the embezzlement go away? Disgusted, I responded. Do you even understand what you're saying? Are you okay in the head? Divorce is the only option now. Reflect on your actions and face the consequences. Having said that, I pushed him away, but he must not have had anywhere else to turn. He clung on desperately. Watching this, my colleagues called security, who dragged him away. He was fired immediately. Regarding the embezzlement, it seems the company is seeking damages from my husband. After finding out about the whole situation, my mother-in-law repeatedly tried to contact my family. However, 
Once she consulted my sensible father-in-law, the calls stopped. I had always wondered why my sensible father-in-law had even allowed our honeymoon in the first place, but when he later came to apologize, admitting his mistake, I understood. After hearing his side, he had believed my mother-in-law was going on a domestic trip with her friends. He was looking forward to a week without my nagging mother-in-law, who was always badgering him about shopping and wanting to dine out, thinking it would be like a little slice of heaven. Then I came home. After hearing about the ridiculous actions of those two, my father-in-law agreed I should return to my parents' home and even helped me pack. At the time, our emotions were high, and without discussing much else, I just went back to my family home. Knowing how genuine, kind, and rational my father-in-law is, I'm sure he would have stopped all this if he had known. He was the only reasonable person I could trust in that house. Although I was the victim, it was incredibly embarrassing to think that my honeymoon had been hijacked by my mother-in-law. I was considering resigning from my job. My parents advised me not to push myself to work for a while. However, my uncle mentioned working might distract me, and he discussed it with the CEO. It seems they arranged for me to be transferred to a branch office. The divorce process with my husband went surprisingly smoothly, thanks to an excellent lawyer. However, I later learned my father-in-law was involved. When we were planning our wedding and discussing the expenses for the ceremony and honeymoon, it turned out my husband had virtually no savings. My in-laws were just an average working-class family with my mother-in-law's wasteful spending habits. They had almost no savings, which my father-in-law had mentioned with a re-smile. Considering how short our marriage was, the alimony was quite substantial. Incredibly, my father-in-law sold the family home to cover it. Their home wasn't in a city center, but in a tight-knit community. When we got married, my mother-in-law invited the neighbors. They saw me returning to the family home on the day I was supposed to be leaving for our honeymoon, luggage in hand. With the neighborhood's resident gossip in the mix, it didn't take long for rumors to spread. The stories grew exaggerated to the point where living in that area became unbearable. Initially, my mother-in-law, who was always concerned about appearances, only approved of our marriage because both my husband and I worked for prominent companies. Having her son and daughter-in-law working for a major company was a status symbol for her. Now, with all the rumors circulating because of her actions, she likely couldn't bear to live in that house. My father-in-law probably also felt responsible for covering the damages from the embezzlement my husband caused. While I have nothing but disdain for both my husband and mother-in-law, I genuinely feel sorry for my father-in-law. After being fired and ordered to pay damages, coupled with me not returning as he hoped, my husband apparently suffered a mental breakdown. Unable to work, he seems to be moping around in a small apartment he moved to. Seeing her beloved son so downcast, my mother-in-law also retreated, becoming reclusive, as my father-in-law told me. In fact, my father-in-law, fed up with my mother-in-law, was considering divorce, as he didn't want to spend his later years with her. He asked if I could introduce him to the lawyer I had used. I immediately contacted my uncle, who got in touch with the lawyer. It might take some time, but I hope my father-in-law can live the life he wishes. Thanks to the intervention of the company's CEO and my uncle, I was transferred to a branch office where I'm surrounded by colleagues and superiors who have been incredibly supportive. I'm eternally grateful to my uncle. The only regret I have is missing out on the country we plan to visit for our honeymoon. Considering everything once things settle down, I hope to take a relaxed trip abroad.